Hello everyone and welcome to Windows Forensics here at Pentester Academy. In this video, we're going to start looking at some FAT file systems using a tool called ActiveAt Disk Editor. Now, ActiveAt is a free tool that's available from LSoft. And if you go to disk-editor.org, you will see where you can download this tool. You can download a version for Windows or for Linux. And this is a very nice tool that you might find useful. The, the only things that it doesn't allow you to do is it doesn't allow you to do things like copy files on images and things like that. Uh, if you want to do those sorts of things, they do have some commercial products that will do that for you. But I have to say, it's pretty nice for a free tool. So I've already gone ahead and downloaded and installed this tool. So let me go ahead and fire it up for you. So here's our tool. It will come up to this screen and will give you the option to either open an actual disk or a file if you just want to use it as a hex editor or to open a disk image, which is probably what you want to do. So I selected open a disk image. I'm going to go ahead and click on the ellipses to browse. Now, when you first say you want to open a disk image, it's going to look for a certain file type, and you probably want to say all files. Now, notice it will open a virtual PC disk image, a VMware disk image. For reasons unknown, it will not open up a VDI file from VirtualBox, but you can easily create a raw disk image from a VDI file. So if I click on all files, I will see a bunch of possibilities. I will just pick one of these and open it. So if I look at an image, you'll notice that it tells me a little bit about it. If I click on disk image and it says that its label is no name. It is a fat 32 volume. Here's its total size, total sectors and beginning sector. If I click on the partition or volume, I will get some more information, including the different file names. Now, to get the most out of Active Add, you want to click on your partition and then click on Open in Disk Editor. So what does this do for you? By clicking on Open in Disk Editor, you get a logical view of your disk. And you will see here it says No Name Volume. So you're not looking at the raw data view. And you might say, so, so what? Uh, some advantages, things like clusters. Clusters are a logical construct. So when I say cluster 2, that relates to a set of sectors. If I don't always want to calculate those offsets, then I probably don't want to use just the raw view. So let's go to this raw view for a second. And here I can see the raw information at the start of this disk. Now, there's a couple of things that you should know about this tool. One of the nice things about this tool is that it supports templates. So over here on the left, I have a template view that is showing me a nice highlighted version of what's over here. And if I click on this drop down, you'll see that I currently have a master boot record as my selected template. So if you recall our previous discussions, we talked about what the master boot record looks like. And here we have all of this boot code that it begins with, followed by a disk serial number. Notice that it has tool tips. So if I mouse over things, it will tell me what they mean. And here is my first partition entry, and there are no further partition entries in my master boot record. And I have a signature of 55AA. I can also click over here in my master boot record, and it will highlight items in my hex view to the right. It will also interpret those items for me. Now, one thing that can happen sometimes you click onto a new item and active at might get a little confused. If it ever does, if you click on the start of your item, usually it's a sector, and you right click and say set template position, 
then it should correctly display your items, assuming, of course, that you've selected the proper template over here. If you're not seeing this template view, if you click on View, Windows, you can tick the box next to template and then it will show up again. Now something you will use a lot is the navigate. The navigate button will allow you to go to different parts of your disk or volume. So if I click here, I'm in the raw data view, which is the entire disk. To navigate, you'll notice it says, would you like to navigate to the primary fat partition, its boot sector, its boot sector copy, the first fat, the second fat, or the root directory. You can also go to unallocated space. It's not unusual to have unallocated space in your file system because things didn't work out nice and evenly or there's some other reasons like alignment on various boundaries that will cause you to have a little bit of leftover space sometimes. Now I'm going to shift over to my logical view, the volume view, and notice that once again I still have navigate, but I don't have the ability to navigate to things like the MBR because it doesn't exist inside this partition. Also notice that the sector numbers are different because these are sectors within the partition. If I went back here, notice that my file system begins 63 sectors into the drive. Whereas here, of course, it starts at zero. I can go to my boot sector. In this case, since I used the navigate button, it did update my template. If that didn't happen, if you got there some other way, you can always, again, click on the start of the sector, tell it to set the template position, and make sure you have the proper template selected from your dropdown. So here I can see my boot sector. And once again, the template interprets things for me because it's FAT32. There is a backup boot sector that is also interpreted. We will talk more about these items in future videos. I can navigate to my FAT. Here's my first FAT and my second FAT and also my root directory. So that's how you can navigate around other ways that you can move around. You can go to a specific sector. Now, you probably don't have to click on the More button for this. The only reason I have to do this is that I have my font set kind of large so that you can more easily see this on the video. So if I click on Go to Sector, you'll notice it says, give me a sector number or give me a cluster. So I want to go to cluster number two, which is where my root directory is. If I go back here to the raw view, You'll notice when I say go to sector that the cluster is grayed out. And the reason for that is that a cluster, again, is a logical construct. It is a collection of sectors and you need the information from things like the volume boot record in order to know where a particular cluster is relative to sector numbers. And how did I get that logical view? Once again, if I went to my computer, and I clicked on the partition and then clicked on open a disk editor. That is how I got this extra tab. Well, that's all for this video. As always, if you're enjoying these videos here at Pentester Academy, please tell a friend. We'll see you soon.